fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode a trail that followed the crest of a hill outside the town of Red Bank. The early afternoon sun was hot, and the two men moved at a leisurely pace. Me think we get close to Red Bank, Kimasabi. Yes, I know. Keep your eyes open for a good campsite, Tonto. Uh We'll pitch camp and get a few supplies from town. Uh You not say why we come to this territory. (laughs) I was waiting to see how long it would be before you became curious, Tonto. Well, me curious now. A notorious gang of outlaws is operating near here. The sheriff of Red Bank and his men can't seem to cope with them. Oh, well, that's not good. The gang seems to know every move that's made by the sheriff, as well as the time and route of money shipments by coach or rail. Seems to me that... Oh, sir. Oh, 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 oh. That shooting came from the valley. Look, King Sabi, down there. Stagecoach, hold it. Monsilver! Not scout! Racing at top speed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed down the side of the hill toward the trail below, where they could see a stagecoach stopping. There are three outlaws, Tonto. Uh-huh. Use your guns! Uh-huh. Outlaws, see us. Them leaving fast. Yes, they're separating. I'll follow the one who's going out to the right. You go on to the stage. Monsilver! Master big fella! Leading Tonto to go to the stagecoach, the Lone Ranger urged the great stallion forward in the direction taken by one of the outlaws. For a few moments, the fleeing man didn't realize he was being followed. Then, turning in the saddle, he saw the pursuing masked man and immediately raised his gun and fired. Without wasting time to return the fire, the Lone Ranger, bending low in the saddle, encouraged Silver to even greater speed. Monster! Silver sensed the urgency in the ringing cry and exerted his strength to lessen the distance between his master and the rider ahead, in spite of the bullets which once more came whining back toward them. Gradually, the space between the riders grew smaller until the Lone Ranger was close enough to see the expression of fear on the outlaw's face. The outlaw had emptied his gun and was now intent upon getting away from the relentless masked figure that closed up behind him. The next instant, the Lone Ranger was alongside and with a mighty leap knocked the outlaw from his saddle. I want you. I get to your feet. I'll show you, you dirty coyote. I haven't had enough now, all right? I'll fix you for that. More than that to do it. Take it. Wait. Wait. Get up and get on your horse. What are you going to do? We were cutting in on the job that you planned, Don't mister. Don't let the mask fool you. 
Hazel! Easy, big fella. All right, come on, get to your horse. I'm taking you in the Red Bank to the sheriff. All right, get going. Get up there. Come on. Come on, Hazel. The Lone Ranger rejoined Tonto, and the two men took the outlaw into Red Bank to the sheriff. After putting the prisoner in a cell, the sheriff returned to his office where the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend waited. By thunder, Marshal over at Pecos wrote me that we'd get action when you arrived to help us round up that outlaw gang. <laughs> but I didn't expect you to bring one of them into town when you came. We don't know yet that he's one of the gang you've been after, Sheriff. Not right. <laughs> when the two of you came in a while ago without outlaw, I thought the gang was about to take over my office. Until you gave me the note from the Marshal... And that silver bullet. <laughs> Did you get any information from him? No. Found out his name is Spike Malloy, but that don't mean anything. He just won't talk, that's all. I think he will later, so don't worry. Oh, have you found out any more about the gang since you got in touch with the marshal? Not a thing. Oh. They just go on having their own way, seems like. But me and my deputies have figured out one thing, though. Oh? What's that? Well, we figure either the leader of that gang is someone from hereabouts, or he has someone in that gang who's in a position to find out things. I see. I, uh, I was just thinking, Sheriff. What you thinking of? That prisoner Spike were to escape tonight. He might lead us to the leader of that gang. Uh, hmm. Yeah, well, say, you got something there, mister. I'll fix it with the deputy I leave on guard tonight to give that outlaw a chance to get away between 8 and 9 o'clock. Good enough. Make sure there's a bronc out back you can get to easily. Sure, I'll see to that. I'll meet you at the edge of town at 8 o'clock. And you and Todd and I will follow Spike when he leaves. Then, see you then, Sheriff. Adios. Adios, mister. A short time later, two riders reined up before a small, rather prosperous-looking farmhouse a few miles outside of town. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. So, you have come back most quickly, no? Sure, we're back quick, Marie. Where's Frenchy? He's in his cellar right out with the others, playing cards as usual. Go into the kitchen, Rusty, and yell down to Frenchy to come up a minute. Right. But you have not brought back Spike. Why has he not come back with you, Hank? Hey, Frenchy. I have asked about Spike. You'll hear about him when Frenchy gets up here. Frenchy's coming right up. It is about time. Always it is I, Marie Larue, who must keep up a showing as a respectable farm wife while my husband is playing the cards most all the day. Oh, stop complaining, Marie. You're lucky to be married to a smart hombre like Frenchy. Well, so you have come back. Where's Spike? Hey, look, Frenchy. That stage hold up you thought to be so easy fizzled out. Fizzled out? I do not comprehend what you're Rusty you means we didn't get away with it. So. And Spike, what of him? Listen, Frenchy. A couple of owl hoots, a masked man and a big white stallion, and an Indian come riding out of the hills and drove us off. Not only that, Frenchy. That mask, Omri, took out after Spike and captured no, him. No. Capture him? But why did you let him? How is it that both of you could not Lord, do anything don't to... don't fly off the handle, Frenchy. I'm telling you, that mask, Omri, was big and tough. And fast as lightning. And so was the Indian, for that matter. Frenchy, c'est l'homme de la masque. And hey, what's that mean? Oh, pardonnez-moi. What I mean to say is... It is the man of the mask. The long one. Oh, oui, Mary. It is possible. Huh. We have heard of this masked one. He who is called the Lone Ranger. Oh, it could have been him at that. It is not good, mon ami. Where did he take Spike? In the town by the back way. We followed at a distance and saw him going to the sheriff's office by the back door. We thought we'd better get right out here and tell you because Spike might get to talking. No. I do not believe Spike will talk while he is in jail. And when he gets out, well, we shall see. What do you mean when he gets out? I will tell you this much first. That masked man he is one very smart fellow. No, he. He is working on the side of the law, that I know. So? Frenchy, he is smart, too. Sure, sure. Go on. I say to myself, 
What would I do if I have one outlaw, and it is my wish to get to the others? Well, what would you do? It is very simple, mon ami. Yeah? I would let the one escape. Then I would follow him to the others, oui? You mean you think that they'll oui. let him... That is what I believe. But what are we going to do? If they should let Spike escape and he came uh-huh. here... Do not be concerned, mon ami. Remember, French Larue is known as a respectable farmer around Red Bank. Who oui, is that he saw? I shall ride there and watch. If Spike is allowed to escape, well, you need not worry, mes amis. Frenchy Larue will take care of everything. Late that afternoon, Tonto, who had gone into town, returned to the temporary camp on the outskirts of Red Bank, where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Yes, Scott. Well, Tonto, <coughs> did you see any suspicious strangers around town? No, no Kimasabi. Me go into cafe, wait a while. One fella come in. Him seem plenty friendly with others. Oh, tell me about him. Well, me standing near back of cafe. Big fella come in. Him dressed oh, like farm. How's the farming business? Yeah. Never great, Frenchy. No, I'm no, Miss Emmy. It is you who must have the drinks with Frenchy LaRue, we? Eh? Oh, <laughs> yes, a farm must be doing all right the way you spend your money, Frenchy. Oui, oh, oh, it is good to be a farmer. Plenty to sell, plenty to eat, no? The other small farmers around here are complaining. I guess you French have a way of cutting corners to make ends meet. <laughs> oh, that is possible, mon ami. My beautiful Marie and I, we are most happy. <laughs> oh, will you fill the glasses, monsieur, s'il vous plaît? Sure, Frenchy. Come on right up. Step up, man. Frenchy's tree. If your Marie could see you spending your hard-earned money on us, Aubrey, she'd skin you alive, Frenchy. <laughs> oh, perhaps she do not know, monsieur. Perhaps Frenchy gets more for what he sells than she think, eh? <laughs> Here's your drink, boy. Oh, so that's it. You hold out on her when you sell your stuff. Well, Good. here's to you, Frenchy. Yeah, here's here's right, Frenchy. Yeah. Ah, uh, merci beaucoup, mes amis. Now I must go on home. Never must I be late for supper. That is one thing that brings the temper into the eyes of my memory. <laughs> and you, mes amis. French fella, him put money on bar and leave right away. I see. Did you hear anyone mention the hold up while you were there, Toto? No. No one say anything about hold-up. Oh. Well, I guess we'll eat supper and wait for the sheriff to join us. Then when Spike is allowed to escape, we'll see where he goes. A little before 8 o'clock that night, the sheriff joined Toto and the Lone Ranger on the edge of town. They rode to a clump of trees from which they could watch the back of the jail without being seen. Oh, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we can see if he comes out from here. Hope he doesn't realize his escape is planned. Deputy's going to take his supper in late. And one of the other boys is going to call for the deputy to hurry into the front office. He'll put down the tray, hurry out without stopping to lock the cell door. I see. And that good. Spike's sure to notice it. He can unbolt the back door and there's a bronc hitched out back. Yes, I can make out the horse from here. He should be leaving any minute now. Deputy was just going in when I... Look, somebody coming out. Uh, that right. Must be Spike, all right. Him get on horse. Get on me, get on. Come on. All right, let's go after him. Come on, Silver. Get him up, just... Get up there. For a short distance, the three men followed Spike. He went around a bend in the trail ahead. A minute later, two shots rang out. Those shots are up ahead around the bend. I can see a figure lying on the trail. The moon's bright enough to see by. A horse standing nearby. (laughs) Sheriff, look here. Uh, It's Spike. Yes, it's Spike, all right. But what's more, he's dead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the Sheriff stood looking down at the body of Spike for a moment. Then the Lone Ranger spoke. Sheriff, someone either found out or had a hunch that Spike would be allowed to escape tonight. Sure looks like it, mister. And that means whoever shot him figured out he'd be followed. Is that right? If I'd had any idea Spike was riding to his death, I wouldn't have done... I know what you're going to say, but him and the rest of them in that gang are killers. They all hang when they're caught. Yeah, well, now what? We'll take this body back to town without letting anyone know what happened. Then we'll make further plans. The Lone Ranger with Tonto and the Sheriff took the outlaw's body to town, which they entered by the back way. They carried Spike into the back room of the jail. Then, while the sheriff went to notify the coroner, the Lone Ranger gave certain instructions to Tonto, after which he went to the edge of town again to wait. About an hour later, Tonto reined up at the temporary camp. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. He's a scout. Find out anything, Tonto. Ah. Me go to Cafe. Stand in shadows near back. Me wait. Then rough-looking man come in. Yes, go on. Well, you him... Two or three drinks at bar. Then him start talking to Barky. Him say something you tell me to listen for. Ah, it sure looks like you got quite a crowd here tonight, Joe. Well, no more than usual, as far as I can make out. Well, what I mean is I expected some of these hombres to be out with a sheriff and a posse. Posse? What for? Well, didn't an hombre escape from the jailhouse earlier tonight? Well, not that I heard of. What gave you that idea? <laughs> I guess I heard somebody saying something about an escaped prisoner and got the idea it meant someone broke out here in Red Bank. <laughs> Just forget it, Joe, and give me another drink. Same thing. Coming right up. Last time anyone busted out our jail that I remember was about two months ago. I guess you heard wrong. We wait a few more minutes. Then tell her... Look like him ready to leave. Me come to tell you what me hear. Good. If him outlaw, then him come this way on same trail as other outlaw who escaped from jail and get shot. Yes, that's right. No one knew about that escape but the deputy to jail and us, Toto. The man you heard mention at the cafe must have shot Spike or heard about it from the one who did. Mm, that's right. Me sure him one of outlaws. So am I. When he... Ca- Somebody's riding out of town now. Ah, me hear hoofbeats. The moon bright enough to see if him right color. Come on, get along there. Ah, uh-huh. that same fellow came us up. All right, go tell the sheriff to bring his deputies, Tonto. I'll follow that man right now. Here, Silver. <laughs> Easy, big fellow. Scotty, Hurry, Tonto. Ah, uh-huh. me go right now. Adios. Adios. Get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. Following the Lone Ranger's instructions, Tonto rode back into town and reined up in front of the sheriff's office. Oh, Scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy, Scout. Well, well, come in, Tonto. Ah. Uh, what brings you here? Masked man find out something? Not right. Fella come to cafe, ask questions about prisoner. Maybe escape from town jail. Bar cape him see, say him not hear of any escape prisoner. Then man say, forget about it. Yeah, but maybe that hombre just happened to ask that question. Maybe... <coughs> My thunder! Uh, maybe you think same thing Lone Ranger think of. What I'm thinking of is that no one around here or any place else except in us knew about that escape. That's right. Only wants to know. Maybe ones who shoot Spike Feller. Where's the masked man now, Tonto? Well, Feller who asks questions in cafe ride out of town long same trail Spike ride on. Me watch him. Then Lone Ranger say, get Sheriff and Posse. Come out, same trail. Yeah, but where's he at? Lone Ranger follow feller from cafe. Him say feller outlaw. You come with Posse, fast. Great day. If the masked man's gone after that outlaw, he might run into some kind of a trap. They might even have fixed it so that that armor'd be followed. They knew about Spike, you know. Then you get Posse and come, quick. Right, sure. Come on. We'll round up a Posse in a jiffy. Hightail it out of that trail. Let's hope we catch up with the masked man before he rides into a hornet's nest. Let's get going.
Meantime, the Lone Ranger followed the outlaw Rusty until he saw him turn into the entrance to the farmhouse. Making sure he was not seen by the man he had trailed, the masked man turned off and, circling around, came up behind the farmhouse where he found a clump of trees. Leaving Silver concealed there, the Lone Ranger cautiously approached the lighted window of the sitting room. Through the partly open window, he saw and heard Rusty talking to the others. I tell you, nobody's heard anything about Spike escaping from the jail. Oh, that is most strange. Usually when there is a jail break, it is news for the whole town. It means but one thing, my me. What's it mean, Frenchy? But of course, that idiot has been purposely kept quiet for a reason. I do not like it. That man with the mask is very smart, Frenchy. I hope he didn't go blabbing off your big mouth around the cafe, Rusty. I'm no fool. What? I didn't say anything anybody would notice. All right, Mr. Hoist Hoistman, quick. Reach our center, I'll put a bullet in your back. All right. You caught me napping. I sure did. Hey, Rusty. Yeah? I'm bringing in someone that followed you here. Get gone to the front door, mister. Move. <laughs> you should have known we'd have a guard posted outside. Yes, I should have known. Bring him in, Bill. He was listening at the window. The mask man. He's he. The Lone Ranger, no. Uh, what do you think about that? You sure he was alone, Bill? Yep, I made sure. Get over and stand up against that wall there, you. Go on. All right. Take his guns and rip off his mask, Frenchy. Won't be easy. We all got him covered. Go ahead, oh, Wait. Go ahead. One thing I have heard is the masked man is most gallant with women. I shall take the mask and guns. I am most interested to see his face. He will not arm me, I am sure. <laughs> Is it not so, monsieur? Now, monsieur, mask man, are we... Oh, no, you won't. As Marie reached out to take his guns, the Lone Ranger suddenly dropped his hands, grabbing her arms and swinging her around in front of him. Let me go, monsieur. Hey, he's using Marie as a shield. Yeah. Marie is a lady, monsieur. You said you never are rough with them. I'm not with a lady. You would hide behind a woman's skirts to save your neck, monsieur. The skirts won't save your neck when you hang with the rest of these killers. If I get the chance, I'll kill you with my own hands. Yes, I believe you would. I'm holding you with one hand now, Marie. <laughs> this gun in my other hand says the rest of these dirty killers will drop their guns. We gotta do something, Frenchie. I mean just one thing. We'll have to plug them both. No. No, you would not. Frenchy, I'm your wife. Do not let them shoot. I said drop your gun. No. Marie is a good wife. You must make the great sacrifice so that we may get away. No, no. Frenchy, you cannot know. It is you or us, ma chérie. Oh. This is at you. No, you don't. No. This is my way. Let them have it, everybody. Oh, grab those guys. What the hell? The sheriff and the posse. Give them out the back way. You must be. Oh, oh. oh. You all right, Kimasami? Yes, I am. All right, Marie. Line up with the others. Please, monsieur. I am only a woman. Sure, but mighty tricky with the gun, I'll warrant. Gather up their shooting irons, man. Uh, but for her, we might have overcome this mask. Oh, to think I should be the wife of such a treacherous one. You would have killed me with your own bullets, no? Oh, be quiet, Mary. No, no, you cannot make me be quiet. You and these others. You are to hang and I will be glad. You have killed Spike tonight to save your neck. Ah, so he's the one who did that, huh? Keep talking, man. Talk? Oui, I shall tell much. Everything. Shut her up, Frenchie. Ah, she's, she's a female fiend. In his cellar, there's much stolen gold, Monsieur Sheriff. Each of these men have killed others in holdups. I think you'll have enough evidence against these killers, Sheriff. That's right. <laughs> I've heard tell there's nothing worse than a woman scorned. I guess if she testifies against them, she'll get prison instead of the rope like they'll get. Well, Grinchy, you see, you, my own husband, that I love, would not have treated me as well as the law, which you taught me to hate. Listen, Mary, perhaps I've made the mistake. You are still my wife. You do not want to see me hang, my Ha! <laughs> now you'll change your tune, no? Now, with your head about to go into the noose, you are saying I am still your wife. Well, but if this masked man did not stop you, I would be your dead wife. Uh, that's too bad he didn't get a chance to put a bullet in you. Then you couldn't make up to the law like you're doing. Uh, yeah, that's right. Right. The masked one saved my life, and he is on the side of the law. Because of that, I shall tell him everything. Everything, do you hear? Let's go, Toto. Sheriff La Posse can take these crooks in. Wait. Wait, monsieur, please. Yes? 
There is something I must say to you. Well? I I am most sorry for what I said to you before. About hiding behind a woman's skirts and that I would kill you if I had the chance. You have saved me from the bullet print she would have shot into my heart. Forget it. No, no, never shall I forget it. I want you to know, I think you are most brave, monsieur. Thanks. I hope you learned one lesson, Marie. And what is that, monsieur? That there's no honor among thieves. Come on, Toto. <sighs> Such a man as that is a man among men. And to think I should have choose such a one as Frenchie. Ah. Yeah, you sure had bad luck in your choice, all right. And believe me, what the masked man said about a lesson is true, too. Any one of these outlaws would cut the other's throat, including yours, ma'am. Drop of a hat. All right, men, get him out of here. Right. Oh, Frenchie thought he was so clever. More clever even than the monsieur with the mask. Frenchie would sure have to go some to be that clever, ma'am. That masked hombre can outsmart them all. We, even in my country, he is known l'homme de la masque. What's that you say? It is to say, the masked man. <laughs> but out here in the West, everybody knows him as the Lone Ranger. And you can't beat that in any language. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>